Ted Bowser with Reason.tv, reporting guerrilla style from the Sundance Film Festival here in Park City, Utah. His client list spans from Don Imus to Lenny Bruce. And Martin Garbus is featured in a new documentary, Shouting Fire, Stories from the Edge of Free Speech. The film screens at Sundance and is directed by Garbus's daughter, Liz Garbus. These days, do you think threats from free speech are coming more from the left or the right? Or... I think they basically come more from the right. I think that uh, what's going to happen in, in the future with the Obama administration will be interesting the extent to which the Obama administration uh, keeps up some of the regulations from the past about uh, restrictions on free speech and uh, the things like the Military Commissions Act and, and other laws like that. So I think that basically it's, it, it comes from the right. Are you worried uh, what you see on college campuses, though, with the uh, speech codes and that sort well, of Well, I think people like David Horowitz, who are very much involved on college campuses, David Horowitz has published a book called The 100 Worst College Professors. He's a guy who articulates the speech codes. He spends a lot of time with state legislatures trying to take control of the universities away from what he sees it as the liberal media. And the film deals with that. It deals with the infestation, if you will, below the radar of the right in trying to quell certain kinds of discussions on campus, whether it be discussions about the Middle East, or, or, or discussions that are critical of Iraq. And uh, what do you think we can expect from the Obama administration on free speech issues? Well, I'm not quite clear, because I think that the Obama uh, administration, while having a proclivity to free speech, uh, I'm not so sure how it plays out. When you, when you had John Kennedy come in, you had the best and the brightest. Then you had the Vietnam War, and you had extraordinary repression on free speech. You now have the best and the brightest coming in again. Now, I don't know what's going to happen politically over the next four to eight years, but the best and the brightest don't always act the best way with respect to free speech. So, looking back from four years from now, it's anyone's guess if the state... I think it's anyone's guess. I'm, uh, Obama's coming in with an 89% positive rating. Reagan did the same two years later. Uh, they got banged in the Reagan and perhaps Obama got banged in the congressional elections. So you're looking at a very, very small window. Why are you, uh, I mean, so many people are so hopeful for Obama. Why, why the skepticism about his uh, free speech record? Well, I think that uh, one should always be skeptical. I think the government is always, you know, you had the government of Jack Kennedy and, and one was always hopeful then. And they were horrendous when it came to Vietnam, the Bay of Pigs. Lyndon Johnson kept the same. So you can look at the best and the brightest back in the Kennedy days, or you can look perhaps at the worst and the stupidest, the Bush days. But the difference is that the Bush people led us into, they weren't so stupid, they knew where the oil was. And the Kennedy people were awfully stupid. They didn't know that much about Southeast Asia. So the mere fact that you have a good government coming in doesn't tell you very much about tomorrow. And finally, if you had to single out one of the biggest, the biggest violation of the free speech that Bush perpetrated, what would it be? I think it would have to be the surveillance, the, the ability to overhear anybody, the ability to wiretap at will you know, under the name of uh, terror. God knows, God knows what they're following.